You can't authentically give what that person needs. But some people don't want to have that conversation either, though. Uh, but I feel like, okay, so we about to get into it. So, what's up? I already know why y'all here. So since we're here, let me go ahead and tell y'all that Corey Jones is not, in fact, is not my ex-husband, okay? Period. For all y'all that are here for Mr. Corey Jones <laughs> in this video, him and I have been friends for years, okay? Same college. We went to different high schools. We're from the same hometown. That's it. That's it. That's it. That is. So y'all can call off the sirens. And all stop commenting on her stuff. Coming from my channel to comment on her stuff, talking about she my ex-wife. Y'all bullies. <laughs> y'all straight bullying me. And I ain't even a girl. You feel me? It's horrible. The but internet, it, man. The internet. <laughs> they get Damn. on my nerves sometimes, boy. Dang. <laughs> but anyway, thank y'all for coming back to my channel. If y'all are new here, welcome. Please subscribe if you want to see more. Go over to Corey Jones's channel for the other version of this video. But as you can see from the title, we're about to get into some things about marriage. We married, both of us married young, and a lot of you have a lot of questions about that. So right. let's get into it. Let's see what I got for letting the hell. Do you think marrying young benefited you in any way? If so, why or why not? In, in a sense, I do because although my marriage didn't, didn't work out, obviously, I learned a lot from my young marriage and like what not to take into my next relationships and what to take into my next relationships. And a lot of the time I do feel like we've been there and done that. So like when we're looking at people now getting married, it's almost, it almost kind of makes it seem like we should. We should be doing the same thing, but baby, right. no. Because right. <laughs> right. we did it young, and um, maybe it came with, you know, obviously it's turmoil and it's challenges, but looking at it in hindsight, it really does like help you to prepare for what you would want to be your solid relationship now. Because I think people now our age are like getting married and having kids. Oh, yeah. Fact. And we're still like single, but people don't, well, single living and single, but people don't recognize that we've already done that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, been there, done that. And wrote a book about <laughs> it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you learn more about, you know, what your deal breakers are, what you need to discuss, mm -hmm. you know, before you tie the knot. Because let's ro run it back. <laughs> Let's run it better. Okay. I was young in the sense of I knew, you know, my ex from like college, but mm -hmm. you knew yours from, from high school. Right. Yeah. Like I used to see you around. I ain't never knew you. Because I used to be indoors, as y'all think I'm in the streets because I got that on the fire. I ain't never seen Leslie on campus. You know, I don't think we did see each other. What the hell you was at? I was indoors. Okay, I didn't have time to be playing around with nobody questioning none of my loyalties. Because <laughs> college was, was where you're supposed to act. You know what that means? She is a loyal one. That's what that means. She I loyal. was indoors. No one knew me except for when I did. Sometimes I went to kickbacks and stuff. Pop out. Yeah, yeah, and they used to be like, oh, that's the married friend. Like, that's what I said. Yeah. That's all they used to say. But, okay. But that was it. She a loyal one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> all, all right. right, all right. So what you got for me, Leslie? Okay, Corey. So let's see. This is a good one. Did you feel pressured to get married the first time? And what made you marry young? Pressure. Hmm. I would say a little bit, honestly, because for one, we was together pretty much throughout college. Mm -hmm. For one, Black USC kind of considered us that couple to look like they gonna make that next the one. ideal couple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was a little bit of pressure. Okay, so, hold on, let me put my, all right, so, Leslie, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, after you finished, after you got divorced, I guess you could say, Okay. you know, that, that weighs a lot on you, you know, after the, everything happened, Ooh. it weighs a whole lot on you, you know, how did you feel and how did you heal from that? 
Well, originally, before I even made the decision mm -hmm. to get divorced, mm -hmm. I went into this really bad, like, depression state. Like, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't, I didn't know what was wrong, like, what was going on. Before I knew it was, like, time to dissolve it, mm -hmm. I felt really depressed. I felt like I didn't technically know what I should do, but I did. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I just didn't want to make the decision, gotcha, right? Gotcha. Um, so I, I went to counseling. She didn't have to say anything. I just went in there and talked to her and I was crying. I was like, I shouldn't feel like this. Like, I, I shouldn't feel like this in my marriage. Right. Um, and so I made the decision to, um, you know, request the divorce. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I felt a sense of relief. I was already kind of by myself because I was deployed at the time. Okay. So I was already, you know, starting to hone in on who I was and being by myself. So it wasn't that much of a transition once I got back. And plus half of our marriage was, majority of our marriage and our relationship was long distance mm -hmm. after I went to college. So gotcha. once I went to college, it was all long distance anyway. Was um, he still in the hometown? Was no, he was he was military, so he was in oh. Kansas. Oh, damn. Yeah, he was far really? away, like we were states away. What? That probably was a huge part of it. No, I'm sure it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but to, we're not gonna go into it. But <laughs> I'm sure it played a role because I haven't got my my haven't got my wonderful story out about. You need somebody to shoot it. And I, set the move. I right? will definitely have you do it. I need you to direct it because <laughs> Thank you. I still for years been six five six years and mm -hmm. I've been telling y'all I'm gonna tell y'all my story and I never have. Tell it. We ready. If y'all wanna see that. Y'all want to see that, and y'all want Mr. Corey Jones to direct it. Like Be sure comment. to comment and like this video, period. Yes. <laughs> but how I healed, what I did was I decided, ooh, I did two things. I was outside. Outside. So I was outside, but I was also not, I was outside. <laughs> not thought and bothered. But I wasn't thoughting. From there, I made a commitment to focus on myself, not so much wanting to like be in a relationship or anything like that. Just okay. kind of doing me, but still catering to my needs. So like people be like, oh, well, you know, self care, like don't, you shouldn't be having sex. You shouldn't be doing any of that. Um, or talking to other guys. You just, right. you know, you're going through divorce or da da. It's like, girl, you deserve to do what you feel is necessary to do yes. for you to feel good and to heal. Right. It took me years, like to fully like start to really love myself. So don't think that it has to be something quick. I would not recommend getting into like anything with anybody right after you, if you get a divorce or break up or anything. Just do what makes you feel good and it'll all work itself out, in my Thanks. opinion. I agree. I'm gonna drink to that. <laughs> Me too. Good ass. <laughs> I'm gonna get into one for Corey here. What are some pros and cons of being married? Okay. One or two. Uh, I'm gonna say the pros is you should always have somebody there and have your back support you. Um, cons, I mean, really, when things go wrong, they go wrong. <laughs> The next question is, do you believe marriage is worth it now, like as an adult? A lot of times people look at marriage and just think of the outside. Like, oh, I want to have this wedding, this big wedding, because I want to invite all these people. We're going to do this. We're going to turn up. A show. Yeah, a show. Yes. And not everyone else and not just the bride neither. I want, I want it to be about us. us. You know what I'm saying? I understand. What is one thing you will do better for your future husband in your next marriage? Shoot. Before we answer okay. that, in your last marriage, do okay. you feel like there's anything that you could have done better to prevent whatever happened? And then let's answer the second. Yes. I would say that in, in a synopsis, it would be to, to put my pride aside. I don't always have to be right. Okay. And that's something I think was a, a catalyst to a lot of things that happen. Okay. Um, whether actions on his end were right or wrong and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But I think that I learned I learned from that too. I took advantage of USC six counseling sections while I was there. It did happen. Learned a lot. 
learned a lot about myself. I wouldn't say I've mastered that mm -hmm. yet. This is something I still struggle with even in the relationship I'm in now. Um, because during that time, I guess, where I was healing and I was by myself, I didn't have anybody I needed to put my pride aside for. Uh, it's something that I still, is still is a challenge for me right now that I am making a conscious effort to work at and understanding people's intentions, trying to grasp what somebody's intentions and holding on to that versus always harping on their actions. Mm -hmm. That is very hard. It is hard thing to master, but trying to understand where somebody's headspace was can really set the conditions for how you move forward with them. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of internalizing how their actions made you feel, mm -hmm. focus on what their intention was. And hopefully y'all have some sort of rapport, you know, interest. That is such a <laughs> More so women weird. need to do that. Because we get misconstrued all the time. Our intentions be right, but the way we do stuff sometimes it don't isn't be, the, the, the be way y'all want it to be yeah. done and stuff like that. And we don't be meaning it sometimes. Mm. But if you could just focus on the intention. Let me drink on that. <laughs> might have to coach focus on the intentions. Okay. But, there, but also be willing to improve, right? So even though your intentions may have been good, be able to take constructive criticism. Like, okay, you took this action. I know your intentions were this. Maybe this would have been a better way, or you could have done this right. and it got the, the results you were looking for. So, yeah, that's true. you know, be that's open to fellas, ladies, if y'all, this feeds y'all so too. <laughs> be open to that constructive criticism from your partner as well, because ultimately it's gonna help both of y'all to be more cohesive, so. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I guess you answered that question. Yeah. Oh. did my best. Okay. Uh, last question for us both. Okay. Yes, which is, do you believe in love languages? And if so, will you incorporate them in your future marriage and how? I do believe in love, love languages. Um, I think, of course, I will incorporate it in all my relationships and my next marriage, I'm not saying marriage is, <laughs> my next marriage. <laughs> But want that to be the last one. I think what a lot of people confuse about love languages is just you, you know? Like, what is your love language? But you also got to realize what's your love language to receive and what's your love language to give as well. And I think mm. a lot of people forget about that. Like, it could be easy for you to receive physical touch and gift giving, mm -hmm. but can you give authentically that to somebody else? You know, no, that I... might not be the same giving as receiving, you know? I agree. So, I, yeah. but make sure that I know what my partner can receive, what I can give, and if that matches up. Because if somebody is, I don't know, at the service, and that's last for my giving, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be good for them. It's going to be hard for me to, I'm, it's not saying that I won't be good for them, but it's going to be hard for me to authentically be at the service for mm -hmm. them if that's not top of my giving, you know what I'm saying? I understand. But so if, your hope is that you have somebody who has the same love language as you. That would be the easier way to go about it. I would say something, something like that. But but then again, see, you know what I mean? Like, like, see, my, my, top, my top love language is general, is physical touch and words of affirmation. Okay. But that doesn't mean that I give that to somebody easily. That's what I want. Like, That's I want somebody to be physical times, touch with me. I want somebody to be words of affirmation with me, but that don't mean that I, I'm going to be. You're great at giving that to somebody else. And that's, yeah, that but you're not. So, but I, but I, I am good at both. But I'm just saying, but that doesn't necessarily mean that somebody No, that's is, true. You know? And that's interesting you say that because most people tend to give love the way they want to receive love. Like, that's historically how, yeah. how it works. So, mm -hmm. it's interesting you say that. Although I, I receive love this way, I may not be the best at giving it to you if we have mm -hmm. the same love language. Right. And sometimes, even then, you know, you can have the same love language, but that doesn't mean that it's that how mean that you... That y'all compatible either, though. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. I mean, it's, it's about work, you know, and what y'all values are mm -hmm. and what, you know, your morals are, too. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't always... Love language isn't the sole basis to compatibility at right. all. Right, um, It really does. I just feel... For me, it's with the core. Like, what's in your core? Yeah, that, too. And I feel like with love languages, it doesn't mean that you're compatible, but if y'all are on the same page, it just means that it's kind of a smooth flow, a flow of things sometimes. 
I think that, I think that, yeah. So to answer, I understand what you're saying. To answer the question from my end, I think that I definitely want to incorporate love languages into my marriage. And I also believe that you have to know what your partner's love language is. Right. Because like, like Corey just mentioned, is you receive love in a certain way, that doesn't mean that your partner receives it in the same way. So you have to right. be willing to, I wouldn't even say adjust, but be willing to work at achieving those, that love for your partner. And your partner is gonna be able to tell you that, should be able to tell you that. It doesn't have to be like you learn this overnight either. Like, oh, words of affirmation, like I'm not good at speaking or whatever, but maybe you just like, lift your lift your guy up once a day or something like that and then it starts to become a habit yeah. Yeah. and yes. then you know now you know how to feed <laughs> feed or fill your partner's love tank mm -hmm. as old mm -hmm. Gary Chapman says <laughs> exactly <laughs> but, and, and piggybacking yeah. off of that I think a lot of people aren't real with themselves especially when it comes to love languages because if you know somebody's physical touch mm -hmm. And they be like, yo, physical touch is my love language. You know you're not physical like that. Mm -hmm. And you're not able to give that authentically. It's going to be kind of rough for you to be around that person and be genuine and authentic if you're not really like that. Yeah. You can adapt. You if can, you're like standoff. Yeah, you're, you, you you're know, not if you're like... not, if you're really not the type to, you know, want to be up on somebody, want, you know, that physical interaction, and you're not really, you haven't been doing that, you're gonna have to really adapt or that person will feel like they ain't feeling feel yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you gotta be so, real with yourself. Don't put yourself in a situation where you can't authentically give what that person needs. But some people don't wanna have that conversation either though. Uh, but I feel like, okay, so we about to get into it. Let go. <laughs> because I feel like you should not avoid that. So I think being honest about it, like being yeah. honest and saying, hey, I'm a very I'm not a very touchy feely person, mm -hmm. a standoff person person. Right. But, you know, tell me what you want. Tell mm -hmm. me what you need from me mm -hmm. and I'll do my best to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can see, if your partner can see, you know, that that effort is enough to satisfy his love tank, mm -hmm. then cool. But if not, then that's when the partner will might have to make the decision and be like, you just not giving me what I need and just vice like versa. That. But I feel like if you're willing to work, I wouldn't say avoid those things. Yeah, I would say it. if you're willing to work mm -hmm. to help or, or feed your person the love that they primarily want, because a lot of people confuse one through five with, oh, this is, I don't like this versus this is the one that least fills my love tank. Mm -hmm. So my, my bottom is words of affirmation and um, um, receive, I think words of affirmation and quality time are my bottom ones. That doesn't mean I don't value them. It just means I value like acts of service and physical touch more, right? right. And so those are the ones that's really gonna feed that person's love tank up faster. Like that's the one that's gonna send me here, those ones. But words of affirmation, they still might make me feel really loved and make me feel real good, but not as much as acts right. of service or physical that's touch true. or being present and things like that. So I would just say, you know, work at it, but y'all, you have to be like very mature and understanding like, okay. And communicate. This ain't, yeah, this ain't it. I, I do think it should be incorporated into the marriage. Me too. And for whatever reason. And uh, how I would incorporate that is just by listening to what my partner says is how he or she, he, like he or she, how he receives love. No, we don't want to tell love. She, I was <laughs> trying to like make it <laughs> together. Okay, this. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. Is that all the Well, questions? let's go ahead and down the rest of this. I think it's all of them. What? That went by so quick. Didn't it? I think you trying to avoid one, that ain't. No. Oh, yeah, that's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. So I hope that we answered all of your questions, or at least some of them, about what it was like to marry young, will we get married again, all that great stuff. Corey has answered many of those questions too on his channel, so be sure to go to his channel and check out his version, his part, because your girl got some stuff on there too, you know, Shan, that y'all may not have seen. Mm -hmm. So head over there to see that as well i appreciate y'all for all the love be sure to subscribe to my channel as well as Corey's if y'all want to see more of us period 
I love y'all. I will see y'all on the next upload. It is your girl, Les Latrice. And remember to always protect your peace. Bye. Thank you.